My out of studio partner on today's program is Greg Durrell. Greg, welcome back. Thanks for having me again, Tom. We are in Chapter 8 of Paul's Epistle to the Romans, and we're going to pick up with verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Greg, one of the things I want to cover in these verses in which we're talking about the the Spirit of God, you know, this program— if you're a first-time listener, it's called According to God's Word. But our, our main thrust here is to speak to Roman Catholics. Greg, you grew up Roman Catholic. I grew up Roman Catholic. But we are now born-again Christians. We have converted from the gospel of Rome, which we believed and maybe never really understood that well as Roman Catholics, but we understand that well now. But we are now encouraging people to search the scriptures, to go to God's word and find the gospel of salvation according to God's word, according to the Bible. You're absolutely right. And we encourage all people to recognize that if you have a religious tradition, whatever it may be, if the Bible is going to contradict it, uh, you have a serious problem, you have a dilemma, and you have to make a decision. Are you going to follow traditions, whatever they may be, whether it's Roman Catholic traditions or some other tradition, are you going to submit yourself to the authority of the Word of God Mm -hmm. and and be saved thereby? So it's an easy choice if you know what both teach. The problem is, like you said, we grew up not thinking, not knowing something, but just being told what to believe. Right. And as a result, there are a lot of people in that boat. But, you know, verse 9 is a, is a marvelous verse because Paul says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. And if here's first class, he's assuming it's true. So in other words, if the believer has trusted in Christ, he says, then the Spirit of God dwells in him. So you're no longer a servant of your own carnality. You're no longer a servant of the flesh. And you should do things uh, accordingly. And and then he says, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, and it's sort of a sidebar here for our Jehovah's Witness friends, notice the interchange here, Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, one and the same. So if you have the Spirit of God and you have the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of Christ is the Spirit of God, So, which demonstrates the deity of Christ. So he says, now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So if you, you're not indwelt with the Spirit, then you're not saved, which also is somewhat of a problem for many of the Charismatics today, mm-hmm. because their understanding is, is that the Spirit comes at some point after a person's salvation. Well, Paul says very clearly here, every believer is indwelt. It's the basis by which we're adopted and placed into the family of God. It's the basis by which we become eternally saved and become part of the family of God. And so Paul commends us here, understand our position in Christ. You know, we we belong to him. We're Mm -hmm. saved. Now live accordingly, live appropriately. Greg, let me go over those verses that, not by what you're saying, but these are verses from the Scripture. that This is what the Word of God says with regard to the Holy Spirit and being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14. It says, In whom ye also trusted, that is, in Christ, whom you've also trusted, you put your faith in Christ. After that, ye heard the word of truth. That's the gospel. The gospel of your salvation. (laughs) He keeps underscoring it. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, that is, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Again, sealed. We have been sealed. Those who believe in Christ have been sealed by the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Now, he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest or uh, the guarantee of the spirit in our hearts. First Corinthians 
Chapter 3, verse 16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, Greg, my question is, I want to really refer to Roman Catholicism, which we've said you grew up as a Roman Catholic, and so did I. Greg, where did we ever hear about any of this, that we were sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption? Oh, never. Never, never taught that. You believe that you received Jesus when you got the host, and obviously as that passed through the system, you had to go receive him again, and you would get him again and again and again. And there was never any understanding of our position right. in Christ. And, and the Spirit would go away when you sure. committed a mortal sin, right? Right. You would, you would be out of the uh, of sanctifying grace. And if you die in that condition, you'd go directly to hell. But Absolutely. how does that... How can you reconcile that with what the the Word of God? I mean, I just went through four verses, you know, two in Ephesians, one in 1 Corinthians, one in 2 Corinthians, and we have all of these verses in Romans. Now, how is that reconciled with what we were taught as Catholics? Well, you, you can't reconcile it, and that's why, as we've said on previous broadcasts, that if you were to go to Mass every Sunday for 50 years, you would never hear 70% of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. You would never hear it read, because to hear it, what would someone think? I'll ask you this. How many times did you read those verses when you were Catholic growing up on your own? Never. Never, see? You never read them. So you didn't know they existed. Didn't know they existed. I mean, I've had dialogues with priests, and I would quote a verse out of Corinthians or somewhere, and they would say, is that in the Bible? And I would say, well, sure. They said, show me that. I mean, they were totally unaware that yeah. those things existed. Now, Greg, in their ignorance, and this is really what I'm trying to present here, don't you see how wonderful this is? That God, that by putting our faith in Christ, putting our trust in Him, He seals us with the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. Our bodies, our beings become the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And right. this is for our security this is our our confidence that and and the promises this is a it says a, a down payment you know right. a guarantee of all that Christ has for us it begins with putting our faith in Christ how wonderful isn't this incredibly exciting the scripture tells us that the holy spirit this other comforter parakaleo that that comes in and dwells us the scripture teaches that that he'll never leave nor forsake us mm-hmm. now according to rome he will or if we don't believe he will, then we believe in the Holy Spirit can go to hell, right. and the Holy Spirit goes to purgatory. Here we see in Romans that it seems this, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, the Spirit of God are all synonymous. Right. They're, they're all one. You can't divide the Trinity and only get a third of the Trinity. You, I mean, you get God. God, you are the temple of God. God indwells you, and that's the good news. Now, can you lose that? Paul says, if we remember from reading Romans 5, Paul says, while we were his enemies, he died for us. Then how much more will he do after Mm -hmm. we believe? So when we become a child of God, is he going to abandon us because we become a disobedient child and allow the flesh to have its way? We become carnal, carnally minded, and so then he is going to unseal us, kick us out of his family, disinherit us, and throw us in hell? That's absurd. That's not good news at all. It's bad news. And it really then would make it much better for a person to stay lost as long as they could. And at the last moment, if they mm-hmm. had the time, then get saved. Right. This is something that Constantine figured out uh, based upon his teachings, which had a strong Catholic orientation, even back then. All right. But he understood some in the church erroneously believed that how baptism saves you. So he was hanging out. He didn't want to be baptized until just before his death. Sure. But that's absurd. And again, what we're pointing out here is that this isn't my idea. It's not your idea. We have read the scriptures here. We encourage. The, the name of the program is According to God's Word. We would encourage any and all of our listeners to go to the scriptures that we're talking about, and you try and reconcile it with what you believed as a Roman Catholic, what you believe as a Roman Catholic, or anybody else who believes something that's contrary or it seems to be at odds with what's being said here. If the the seal could be broken, first of all, the Scripture never says that, because you were sealed until the day of redemption. Yeah, it it tells you how long you're sealed to. Exactly, exactly. 
So this is, as you said, Greg, this is the wonderful good news, and that's what we want to share with people. Repeating verse 9 in Romans, chapter 8, verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, talking about believers, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Again, the Spirit of God doesn't come in because you receive this wafer, all right? The Spirit of God comes in when you receive Christ by faith, when you put your trust in him for what he has fully accomplished for you on the cross. And only he could accomplish. He paid the full penalty for your sins. He's our substitute. He took the wrath of God. He paid the full penalty, and he has done that all for you and all the only way you can receive that is by faith, by putting your trust in him. Well, you know, Tom, too, it says that the spirit of God, not the flesh of God. Mm-hmm. First Corinthians, Paul tells us that we no longer know Christ after the flesh. So Rome teaches what? You receive the literal flesh of, of Christ. Unless you eat his flesh. Right. And, and Paul is saying just the opposite here. We're not looking for someone who thinks he's ingesting Christ physically on an ongoing repetitious means or basis. He's talking here about someone once for all who receives the Spirit of Christ. Right. That person is saved forever. Yeah, but Greg, what if somebody said, well, wait a minute, doesn't the Bible say that we're to eat his flesh? Sure. Well, what, well, it it, does. what does it mean by that? Well, <laughs> does he, it really he tells mean... us, he says, not in John six fifty eight. he says, not as your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, they ate it physically, and he says, are dead, but he that eateth or feeds upon this bread shall live forever. Six right. John six sixty three. Right. the words that I speak, they are spirit. They are spirit, exactly, right. exactly. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. So that just lays it out very simply. If you are born again of the Spirit of Christ, then you have Christ. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. The Spirit of Christ dwells within you. If you do not have the Spirit of Christ, which can only be, who can only be received by faith, then you're none of his. You just got to come to that understanding. So if you have the Spirit of Christ, you're saved. Right. Okay. And if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you're not saved. Right. And if you have him, you're saved forever. So if you have the Spirit of Christ, you don't need to go receive him again and again and again and again, because he never leaves you. So again, if we just look at these simple verses here in Romans, it negates the very heart and soul of Catholic worship. It eliminates the need of anything called a mass, anything called the sacrifice for sins for the living and the dead with the ingestion of Christ. It it makes that a moot point and totally unbiblical. Right. You see, men have a way. We talked about this last week. There's a way that seems right into a man. Call him, call him a religious man. But when you begin to make up religion, when you begin to add things to God's Word or add things that really reject, in fact, God's Word, you're lost. You have no way, and it's a delusion. And it's something that uh, you're going to have to come to grips with. And the only way you're going to find out what is true, what the Lord wants— is to look to his word, to, to search the scriptures, or else, again, it, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, destruction. And again, we would challenge the listeners, uh, if you've just tuned in for whatever reason, go back and read the first seven chapters of Romans, and then bring that knowledge into Romans 8, uh, and it's much clearer. Mm-hmm. Clearly, uh, the first three chapters tells us that it's faith alone in Christ alone that brings everlasting life. Please visit our website, thebereancall.org, to access our radio archives going back to 1999 and our newsletter going back to 1986. We offer daily updates by email or visit us on Facebook or Twitter. Are you looking for information about a specific topic? Go to thebereancall.org and click on Topics at the top of the page. Our online store is thebereancall.com. We offer a wide variety of books, tracks, CDs, and DVDs. Note that most of our ebooks are free. I'm Gary Carmichael. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you can join us again next week. Until then, we encourage you to search the scriptures 24 7. Don't go with me. 
I still will follow, no turning back, no turning back.